friends, welcome to the Cancer Joy Club. Here we share uplifting stories and chat with amazing guests who guide us through cancer healing and journeying and beyond, and we spread that joy together. So I'm Jasmine, and we have Grace, our co-host, who is an amazing relationship coach, a cancer survivor. Both of us have made it through stage three, and she's also a hilarious comedian. So Grace, come on in. Let's well, hello. Thank you for that intro. <laughs> so today I'm so excited, Jazz, because I've been talking to this lady on Twitter, well, X, and she has a or, an organization called Together for Cancer. And we're going to find out today more about this organization and her. And guess what? Hmm. This is the first time that she goes out to the world to show who is behind Together for Cancer. I love that. Yay, what an honor. Okay. Yes, so we have an exclusive, y'all watching out there, we have an exclusive today. Yes, we do. So I'm going to introduce Shruti. Um, she is the founder of Together for Cancer and she reveals her identity for the first time. Oh. Discover her mission to empower cancer patients and caregivers. Please welcome to the virtual stage, Shruti. Yay! Thank you for having me. And the honor is all mine. I am oh. so, so glad to be here. So thank you for, thank you, Grace, for reaching out. I, I'm a very, very private person. I don't I never imagined that I would be talking to people on Twitter and uh, talking to fantastic people like you. Uh, but I think I, I'm so glad that it happened. And I'm so glad uh, to be here to talk to you fantastic people. So, and we're thanks. so happy that you're here because your work is amazing. And I mm -hmm. love that you do it behind the scenes where it's like, I don't want to, you know, get praise for it or like, I'm just doing this for the cause. Yeah, to help tells people me, right, Jess? Yeah, to help people in the world, to help people communicate, to learn things they need to learn. Like that's an amazing support. You, thank you. Oh, thank you. So I um, can I can I tell you about why? Yes, please. Yes, of course. That was my next <laughs> question. Actually, can you tell us about your journey as a cancer caregiver and how it inspired mm -hmm. you to create Together for Cancer? Yes. Yeah, so it's a it's a long journey. I, I've been, a, I am a pharmacist. I grew up in India, always wanted to be a pharmacist and that's what I became. And then uh, I joined the pharmaceutical industry. Uh, I did a PhD and all that stuff, but I joined the pharmaceutical industry in medical affairs. And it is at that time, some 12 years back that my husband was diagnosed with cancer. And suddenly any diagnosis, it completely changes your perspective. It changes your life. And I realized that in spite of being in the healthcare industry, in spite of having all the knowledge, all the resources, I was completely lost. Uh, my husband was lost and we were getting recommendations um, that were not necessarily aligned to guidelines. Mm -hmm. And there was this despair associated with the disease, rightfully so. But maybe I should tell you, I should be, I would be the only and the first person in the world who would congratulate uh, the husband on being diagnosed because uh, <laughs> because when we got the diagnosis we had like four different uh, alternatives that could have happened and then uh, when we went through uh, second opinions and went through a pathology review we found that we had a very rare kind of cancer that was uh, i hate to use the word but considered the better cancer of yeah, the yeah. options, right? Okay. So uh, when we came out of the report and I went to my husband and I was like, congratulations, he's like, no cancer? I said, no, <laughs> we, we do have it, but I can handle this. At least I know what it is. At least I know it is stage, early stage and at least I know how to handle this. So let's, let's get on to working with this. But even then, even after the diagnosis, it took a long time for us to get to an oncologist that would treat by the latest guidelines, there was a disconnect between how, um, and I was in India at that time, I was consulting uh, uh, oncologists at MSKCC, I was consulting at uh, Johns Hopkins, and even uh, 
at premier institutions, there was disconnect between uh, what people were recommending because the guidelines had only recently been uh, updated. And therefore, it was a maze to um, find a fantastic oncologist at some time who, who said, OK, this is the way we go forward. I know it is a risk, but considering that my husband was 32 at that point of time, uh, it was a risk worth taking. And thankfully, we aligned on a plan, uh, had a fantastic team to work through, and uh, uh, got through. Uh, he's, he's been doing extremely well. But the whole experience changed my perspective about life. And I came to, within the industry, I moved into oncology. I started supporting the cell and gene therapies. Um, um, I worked towards the launch of the first uh, CAR-T therapy in the world. It was fantastic. And then two years back, my dad uh, was again diagnosed with um, a different kind of cancer. <laughs> which is horrible because again, it was the, we revisited the same memories again. There was still a disconnect between um, how patients should be treated. And in this case, even it, it was even worse because there was some apathy uh, related to the elderly. They were on really? Yeah, you, you can do an open surgery because it doesn't aesthetics don't matter to him he's 75 i was like are you freaking kidding me so mm -hmm. i saw that there was disconnect there was and being in the pharma industry i knew that we create a lot of resources we mm -hmm. create a lot of educational materials for patients but if they're not reaching the patients when they actually need it then what is the point mm -hmm. and um so after 15 years in the industry last year i took uh, an off and I started this mission called Together for Cancer, which is a platform for cancer education. All I want here is for people to have credible information that is backed by evidence uh, so that they know what to do, where to ask, what are the questions to ask their patients, physicians, and how to actually get your life together when you're diagnosed with cancer. So that's what I'm trying to do. And also bringing in some hope. I think positivity, some optimism is a very, very powerful tool in the journey. And that's why I love the name of your podcast, Some Joy, right? We, we have the hand that we are all dealt with, mm -hmm. but what can we do to make it better? What can we do to uh, come out stronger, to make the best use of the resources and the science that is available to us? So that's what I'm doing. Long answer for a short question. No, that, that was amazing. That was excellent. A great answer. And, you know, I found when I was doing chemo, there were uh, women like you start talking, you know, cause you, there's nothing to do. It's so boring when you're being infused for hours. <laughs> so I started talking to this woman and I asked her questions like, what's your stage? What, uh, what is the treatment plan? She had no idea. And I was like asking her questions. And I was like, you know what? Write these questions down and ask your doctor because you need to know. It's so important that the patient be informed because that gives you power and it gives you the information you need to make decisions also about your treatment. Right. So, so do you, yes, go ahead, Jeff. Oh, I was going to say, what, what questions do you from your experience and from putting all of this information together, what are some of the questions that jump out as like, these are the things people should be asking. If you had to give like a top three, a top five, ask these questions. So first, my first question is understand the diagnosis. Like mm -hmm. what, what exactly is the disease and what stage I am in, right? So that is very important. The second thing is about finding, are there any biomarkers science has evolved so much that uh, we are more and more in the uh, era of targeted medicines. What, what is the specific kind? Is there a biomarker available for my disease? And what is it, right? There has to be something. And this is helpful because this is potentially that can help avoid chemotherapy if possible. More targeted is less uh, uh, destruction throughout the rest of the body. Yeah. Third thing that I always ask uh, patients to ask about is what are my options? Mm -hmm. Every physician would have a way of treating, right? Which rightfully so, it is based on their several years of experience, but 
every journey is different. Every patient is different. Every goal is different. So you have to find out what your options are and then find out uh, very clearly also communicate what your goals are and which are the best ones that fit into your goals. Right? There could be a possible, for example, there's a, a, one of the drugs that I worked with uh, in the past, the same treatment, uh, the same um, uh, disease could be treated with an injectable versus an oral. Now, a, an injectable needed a weekly visit to the hospital while an oral could be taken at home. It is important to communicate with your physician and tell him or her whether it's feasible for you because you could have childcare issues to go there. You cannot take off from work every time to go there. You cannot, or you don't want to pay the parking fees to go there every week, right? Those are very practical issues of living with cancer. So it is important for your physician to know what your goals are and what your challenges are. Uh, then I always, always say that either you advocate for yourself or you get a patient advocate you either know about the disease inside out. So there is this one uh, website called, um, it's a little technical, but up to date. Uh, I, I have absolutely no affiliation for them, but they, they're they a very good platform for physician education. It's uptodate.com. They have a weekly pass that is available. It's a $20 pass. Uh, you can get access to all the information that physicians have information to. Wow. When I... Yeah, when you when I have an inf um, a need to know more about a cancer, I get a twenty dollar pass. I go in, I read up as much as I can, uh, or share it with somebody who can understand it more than me, and understand your disease, understand your treatment options, yeah. uh, so that you know, and then uh, get a second a second opinion. It is always I know that we are, we have insurance issues in our country, but wherever possible, get a second opinion because it doesn't hurt. Uh, yes, right. absolutely. Second opinions, I think, are extremely important. In my personal experience, it actually could have saved my life um, because I it went to lymph nodes, right? I had breast cancer and it went to the lymph nodes. And the doctor was like, oh, no, and the MRI doesn't show whatever. And I went for a second opinion and the doctor was like, I see one lymph node right there that shows that it has cancer i can tell because of the shape and i was like yeah that's where it itches a lot that part and so i told the oncology surgeon make sure you get that lymph node because that one apparently is infected and she got out of three she got that one so the other ones were not infected i think it just started to spread so if the second opinion doctor wouldn't have caught that lymph node then maybe they would have taken three lymph nodes that were not infected with cancer and then it would have spread and i wouldn't have known they would have said oh it's stage one or two it's okay yeah but we can save your life guys get a second opinion please 100 percent. or even if you don't uh, my story is somewhat similar in that i started with one oncologist who was very dismissive i had a very small stage one he said you're fine don't even worry about it. Well, yeah, it'll be fine. But it took so long to get any sort of movement with him. And he kept pushing it aside, pushing it aside, that it was weeks. And I finally had to change oncologists because nothing was happening. And it turned out by the time that I got into surgery, I also had it spread to my lymph node. Luckily, I had a great team at that point. But if you don't like your doctor, change. Change. <laughs> yeah. And you yeah. have to you should be able to have a conversation with them. Like yeah. dismissive, yes. the word that you used. It, I, I get furious when I hear that mm -hmm. because that is the reality, right? And I don't even blame the doctors, especially in the community oncology setting. I know that our doctors are overwhelmed. I know that yeah. there's so many patients, sadly, that they're like they're 20 minutes scheduled and they're waiting for the next one. And there's so many people who are looking for our help, right? But at the same time, if you're not able to connect with your doctor, not able to be open with him or her, I think it is time to change and make sure that you get somebody that you who listens to you and mm -hmm. explains to you like a like fourth grader. That is that is the level of uh, uh, information that we need. I, I used to go into my into my appointments and say, just explain it to me like I like I don't know anything. Just yeah. like a small child. Please tell me like a small child. 
that's that's great that's because good. we are we don't know anything about it right when exactly. we get into it after after our cancer journey we get become experts in cancer <laughs> but but, but before that then, is overwhelming it is so much jargon yeah. that like medical professionals use unknowingly because that is the normal language that we have right so i think it is required to uh, find somebody who can uh, simplify it to you write it down take notes as much as possible uh, because you are anyway spinning in your head so nothing stays too much so yeah note uh, take a recorder if possible uh, and if your doctor is okay with it record the conversation and come back and revisit it a hundred percent and also find a doctor that when you say you know during the care period afterwards or during your chemo like i don't know i have a pimple here and it hasn't changed and it's been there forever and uh i want to get it checked for cancer and if they say oh no it's a pimple it's okay don't worry i'm like ah but if you know my my oncologist she says she has ocd so she's like pimple and <laughs> <MRI." laughs> you know it's like, so i love her because i am a hypochondriac and she's an ocd doctor so we're like the perfect team perfect combination yeah. <laughs> i love mine too anytime i'm like hey i had some people who told me go request a pet scan even though she wasn't required i was like i would like a pet scan she's like okay sure anything yep. i've asked for she has given me the same thing where i was like i've got a dark spot and she's like dermatologist go I'm like yeah great thank you yeah. i think it is okay to be over cautious yes uh, and uh, get a clarity of uh and peace of mind rather than be wondering and uh, waiting mm -hmm. for it to explode so absolutely the anxiety is overwhelming the fear of recurrence is real that's that's one thing that's um that's very real. And, and I know that you've been a cancer caregiver and I wanted to ask you, how do you deal on an emotional and psychological level with the people that you have taken care of? Oh, I, I still am a mess. It's been 12 years for my husband. He was first diagnosed with a lymph node on the neck. Even to date, if he keeps his hand here, I, I get paranoid. I'm like, is everything mm -hmm. I know that there are no bloody lymph nodes there at all. Like everything. It doesn't matter. I know. <laughs> I can't see a hand there. So I, I think once once you've been in the journey, you are on that journey forever. Uh, yes. I was talking to my dad this morning. Uh, like I, he he had a problem with this uh, sinus cavity. Again, we 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 got rare kinds of cancers both the time. But then, um, yeah, he had a a stiff headache for the last couple of days and i i again I'm like okay can we go back to an ent uh, just get an endoscopy done because uh, i think it is very difficult but at the same time there are things that you can do right if the the reality of anxiety is there yes. but at the same time i really really believe in science one so i read up about the uh, advancements that have happened for the specific kinds of cancers that we're dealing with. And I, I even now know that if we, uh, I assume the, uh, that there is a possibility of a uh, re um, uh, relapse at any point of time. So I yeah. know that if there is a relapse today, what are the options that are coming? And I celebrate every time the science has advanced a little more. Yes, oh, absolutely. Yeah. I was I was on TikTok because that's my source of information. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> and there was a doctor that was saying that cancer treatment, there's a new thing that's happening, a new advancement. And so he was like in 20 years, you know, maybe it's not going to be a problem as it is now anymore. Like it's not going to be as um, anxiety ridden uh, of a disease. But um, so I'm thinking, you know, it's like every time they make an advancement, then we have a better chance of surviving it. So even if we do get recurrence, then science is advancing tremendously, like immunotherapies. I was HER2 positive. And, um, and also Jazz and I, we were both uh, estrogen positive. So we're doing immunotherapy. I did infusions for a year for the HER2 positive. And mm -hmm. 20 years ago, there was that nothing. was not available. What are what are what's a, what's a fun new advancement that you read about? Is there something you're like, oh, that's nice, that's neat. Oh, the changes that were discussed at ASCO this year. I think there are 
huge advancements in uh, the lung cancer space and also in the breast cancer space. I think those yeah. are completely changing the way we treat uh, lung as well as breast cancer. So I'm very excited about it. Oh. And I, I really, really do believe that it is within your lifespan and mine, we will be reaching a point where cancer is like the hypertension, right? It's yes. a violence, but it's something that we are not scared of. So I, I, agree. I I'm so, so happy yeah. about it. I agree a hundred percent. I think, and that's what this doctor was saying, like in 20 years, it's not like you're saying it might not, it's not going to be like a big deal. Like it is now people hear cancer. There's also a stigma. Like people hear when I say like, they don't know I had cancer and they talk and they're like normal. And then if I say something, they change the vibe completely. Do you find that <laughs> true? Also, when you talk about cancer, people are like, <laughs> you know, I don't know what to do now. Where am I? Okay. How are things going otherwise? <laughs> right? I know, I know. <laughs> I know. I know. So, so for me, one big annoyance that I had was cancer ghosting, and it is real. Did you guys feel it? Cancer no. ghosting. Ghosting. Oh my god! Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh my god! Yes, on social media, also, Whatever. like people are scared they're gonna get cancer from me, or even yeah. just they don't know how to. They don't know how to interact do anymore. Yes. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. What is that? Yeah. So I don't know. So for us. So I'm a private person. I I don't talk too much, especially when I'm struggling with something. So there was this one person that I discussed with and I told him the only person besides my family, well, not even my family, even I couldn't, I didn't have the heart to tell my mom when my husband was diagnosed or even my father-in-law. So we had a very limited set of people who knew in the family and outside of it. Uh, I told one person because we were very close friends. And next day he vanished. I just didn't see him for three months till the time we were getting treatment. And then he comes back and saying that, oh, I was so scared to talk to you. I was like, holy cow, maybe I do not want to talk to you anymore because you have to get over your uh, anxiety and be there for me. And I think just being present you don't want people to give you advice. You don't want people to tell you, drink this green tea, drink this uh, uh, concoction. You just want people to yes. be there. Absolutely. We don't want advice because we have doctors and we have other cancer mm -hmm. survivors and patients that we talk to. And we don't want pity. Yeah. We don't yeah. want ghosting. That's for sure. That tells you who your friends are, to be honest. It really does. Yeah, there were Absolutely. a lot of Oh, like, oh, okay. Haven't heard. Sounds good. I guess that's done. Absolutely. Yeah, and that's okay. And that's, yes. yes. Because that leaves room for people like Grace in my life. People like you should be. So, yeah. Absolutely. I agree 100%. And yeah. I, I made a video actually about what to tell a cancer patient or somebody who has been diagnosed. Like, how about telling us, hey, I'm going to Uber eat some food to you now. Or, you know, I had my Spanish, I tutor Spanish in my adult class. One of them cooked for me and she brought me food to my door as an act of love. And the other students <laughs> didn't want to make the trip. They gave me Uber Eats. Like, I mean, I was like blown away. Like, that's what we need. Or just listen to us complain about cancer for a minute or, uh, Right. Just take yeah, the yeah. Me for a day, right? But people who have kids, just give me the space to be uh, by helping me take care of my kids or take care of my dog for a day. Even yeah. that is helpful, right? So yes, yes. I, I have a video as well, which talks about what to say to a cancer patient. Um, well, I hate the word cancer patient also. I have to uh, correct my patient with cancer. Not yes. a cancer patient. Yeah. So what to talk, what to say to a patient who's been diagnosed with cancer, what to not say, and what to ask your doctors. I, I can forward those uh, videos to you if they oh, have. Yes. Yes. And they and people can find them at your Together for Cancer website. Yes. Uh, what, what will yes. they find when they go there? Yeah. So I, I have presence on Twitter where mostly it is text information, but I also have Instagram uh, handle. And now in the last one month, also on TikTok, I never in my world I life that. that I would be on TikTok, but I'm on TikTok now where yes. I started talking about uh, these, um, it's a, still a faceless brand, 
but I talk about things that I think uh, are relevant for people. So all my videos are on my Instagram and TikTok channels. I love it. And your handle is always together, number four cancer. That is right. Yes. Excellent. So follow her on Instagram, X and TikTok. Yeah, definitely. There's a huge community, cancer community on X, and I tapped into that. The algorithm just put me in there. That's how I met you, Shruti. And also on TikTok, there's a huge cancer community. And it's so amazing because you get people who are going through the journey that have the guts to share it. I didn't have the guts to share it while I was going through it. I needed my privacy, privacy. but a lot of people do it. And it's so just not be it's beyond helpful it's like oh okay i'm not alone in this even if you already had your treatment and you're cancer free you're like oh i felt this too oh yeah. i this happened to me too it is so healing so i encourage all people who are going through the journey or have gone through the journey to put out videos put out content because that is extremely helpful for people that are going through it or have gone through it and they can relate to what you're saying. So thank you for, for your work, Shruti. We appreciate it so much. Oh, completely. Yeah, I, I hope. So I was talking to my dad and uh, about leaving my job and starting this thing. And dad was like, uh, he kept quiet, listened to me about what I was doing. And he said, if one person in the world ever gets benefited from what you're doing, I would be happy with what you're doing so don't worry just oh. keep going and i think that that's what yeah. we're hoping for it becomes a a trusted source for information that can help people in the long run absolutely and one thing that you say or jazz says or i say can help one person that's you made it <laughs> exactly. yes yeah. yeah i think that's amazing well for um we're almost at the 30 minute mark that we keep our podcast chop, chop, chop. <laughs> so um, thank you so much for joining us and for being here exclusively for the first time yeah. showing who you are, the face behind Together for Cancer. Please follow her, guys. She's yes. amazing, as you can see. Beautiful soul. Right. And uh, now, now you're part of the Cancer Joy Club. You're in it. <laughs> I'm so glad to be here. And Thank you very much. It is fantastic talking to you. Thanks. Same here. Same here. We, I truly enjoy talking to you. And yeah. I'm sure. Yes. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much.